Wow, a Tesla Model 3 competitor. Who would have thought that other companies are working on one? Well, Volvo, Volvo's Polestar, uh, their kind of all electric brand, uh, flat out said that, yeah, we are going after the Model 3 and we're coming up with a Polestar 2 uh, very soon. And uh, now this is the image they've, they've uh, produced a few weeks ago. You've probably seen it. There are more images and there's a bigger announcement than that about how this car is going to operate on the inside. And I think it's very interesting. And you know, they really do have a chance of competing with the Model 3. I'll tell you all about it. I'll tell you the specs and I'll tell you, you know, when you can start making your reservations if you want to. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car news, unbiased electric car news. I can't believe I have to say it every time. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and let me give a quick shout out to one of my newer Patreons, Adam Herman. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community, supporting this channel, you know, independently moving forward. If you want to join the community and have an option to watch these videos live, that's the only place where you can watch me live. Uh, if you just go to the description of this video, it's patreon.com slash E4 Electric. So thank you. Uh, Adam and everybody else for supporting my show. All right, let's talk about Polestar 2. As you know, Polestar is a brand that's completely 100% owned by Volvo. And yes, I just did a video about uh, this beauty. It's a Polestar 1, beautiful car. Unfortunately, uh, it's a plug-in hybrid. Even though it's going to have the longest range, electric range for any plug-in hybrids on the market right now, but it only comes in one version at $155,000. And they're, I believe, only making about three of them, 3,000. 3,000 of them per year. Three or 3,000 is almost no difference, right? But nevertheless, that's kind of how they're entering the market, you know, carefully testing out some issues. So I'm okay with that. I'm not a customer, but I'm sure there will be quite a few people because it's uh, who, who will be interested uh, to have money. It is a beautiful car. It's going to have a great performance and it's a plug-in hybrid. So those of you, you know, who don't necessarily believe in all electric cars just yet, this is a good um, this is a good option. This video is on my channel, so you can check it out. Uh, my interview with their rep, and, and this was at the uh, during Monterey Car Week in August. Um, so check that out. But back to the Polestar 1. And, you know, when they announced that they pretty much flat out said, listen, we're going after Tesla Model 3. And so there's a new image now immersed. And I know what you're saying. <laughs> They really need to get their camera people, you know, from under the ceiling all the way and back on the floor and start taking pictures around the car, inside the car. And I'm sure they're working on that. But for now, we get another picture from the top. Uh, now, by the way, I think it's going to be pretty easy to tell what this car is going to look like. Because all Volvo and Polestar cars look like they're going to kind of have the same kind of a design. So look at the Polestar 1, think about smaller version in your mind, and then there you go. Uh, I do like the Volvo's new look. I do like uh, what they've done with their design. Um, so I expect this to be uh, just, again, a smaller version of a Polestar 1. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Now, there's a, there's a bigger announcement that they wanted to talk about today. And by the way, they're, they're going to start unveiling this car in a not start they're going to unveil this car uh in a few weeks um i don't know if they're going to have their own private event or if it's going to be at the geneva auto show which is kind of in a few weeks um and i'm sure um we'll know soon but by the way i'm actually seriously considering putting my deposit down as if it's a thousand dollars i'm definitely going to put my deposit down because i am excited about this car if it's more than that probably no i already have my deposit still for the model 3 just in case I have one for the e-tron i'm a reservation holder for uh for the biton even though that's free so i think if it's one thousand dollars i'm gonna do it but i think that will be the last one that i have i'm gonna have to start you know moving around my money before i do that okay but they did now today unveiled what they're going to do for the user interface inside and i'm telling you it's kind of exciting i met it is kind of exciting. So before that, let me just quickly mention that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. There is a discount code in the description of this video. That way you can grab it and save yourselves a few bucks. I have quite a few of those accessories on my Tesla in my garage over there. So I definitely uh, love this brand. Okay, so let's talk about this. Now, Google UI is what they're going to have. They, they, they you know how... Um, other cars have kind of their own thing going on, their own operating system, and some of them do get linked into uh, Android Auto or uh, Apple Play, CarPlay, whatever you call it. Well, uh, and, and uh, you know, Byton and Audi and a few other ones like BMW are adding, um, you know, the Amazon Echo. I'm not going to say the name because half of you will trigger your your Amazon Echo. So, um, but these guys are actually decided that their entire UI 
is going to be designed by Google and based on the Android system. And I think it's actually a pretty damn good idea. I'm not quite sure why nobody thought about this before, because think about it. Obviously, Android is a very stable uh, uh, operating system that's been designed for the mobile and tablets and stuff like that. And essentially, your car is your mobile device, right? Um, and uh, you, you know, if you ever want to design apps for it, that ready everything's set up and ready to go. I'm sure quite a few apps will you'll be able to use on 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 your device, like Waze, right? Like that's something that a lot of people really would love to use in their cars. And um, most importantly, they're also going to have a Google Assistant in there. So that's kind of an alternative to the Amazon Auto uh, implementation that Audi has and Biden has. I still think that um, you know. Google has a long way to go of recognizing, you know, voices, uh, especially the ones with accents. As a matter of fact, I think my latest version of the Google Assistant is worse. <laughs> it understands me less, you know. So, uh, but nevertheless, uh, they are going full force with uh, with Google designing the operating system for them, and it's good for Google too. Don't forget. I'm sure that's not going to be just an exclusive deal. I'm sure Google one will be able to sell it to other manufacturers, and two, you know. They're kind of working on their own self-driving car and it's not really a far-fetched plan that Google at some point will jump into this game. And guess what? They technically will use brands like Polestar as guinea pigs uh, to develop, uh, you know, a, a really awesome uh, Android um, automobile uh, um, software. But on the other side, you know, Polestar won't have to get into all of that and develop their own in-house. So I think it's a win-win. Now, there's a screenshot and I kind of had to move this um, around for you guys, but... Nevertheless, we can see um, some of the self-driving features that they will have. A lot of it, you know, curve speed assist and lane keeping uh, uh, aid and the blind spot assistant and collision avoidance and all that stuff. Um, you know, that's something that most cars have. I mean, Tesla's suite of those is called autopilot, but really a lot of car uh, cars really have it. Now, by the way, did you see the speed camera warning? I'm not really sure. Is that really that like they want to build that in? No one's going to have a problem that, you know, a car actually literally warning people about when they have speed cameras. Uh, I don't know. I'm, that's kind of funny that they have that. But, um, and of course, this is kind of the way uh, they're going to show you how your car is charging, which I think is kind of cool. Very Google-ish, right? But nevertheless, I've never seen this um, UI before, this type of UI before. So I'm very excited. Now, can they compete with a Model 3? Now, okay, so there are some specs that are coming out and they're saying they will finalize everything. Over 300 miles in range, so they, so they can compete in Model 3 if, if they actually get that done. 400 horsepower, pretty good. Um, now, Google UI, so I think that's definitely going to compete as far as the user experience. I got to tell you guys, I just came back from CES, and so many uh, manufacturers and third-party providers are, are, are putting so many emphasis on, on user experience. that That's why I think this is a great call. Now, they're saying it's going to be within Model 3 price range. Whatever that means, I really don't know what that means because you know, thirty-five thousand all the way to sixty-five thousand dollars, however expensive it now gets, or anything in between. So we don't know. Now we do know that Volvo is nowhere near the limit uh, for the uh, for the tax credit here in the United States, so that should still help. But nevertheless, and what I think is going to be really cool is you'll be able to get this car as part of a subscription service. If you probably know that Model Three, you can't even lease that car right now, and probably will be a while until you can. Well, this is kind of like lease plus, and I love it. I, I, I mean, I'm, I've had quite a few videos why I think most people should lease, so I'm really excited about it. Now, one thing they're not telling us yet, and I really would like them to, is uh, what is the charging rate? What is the charging plug? Is it going to be CCS? Um, how many kilowatts uh, the peak of charging it's going to have? All of this is hopefully will be revealed pretty soon, but there's still some questions, but hey, I think it's only all going to come down about the price, if they can do the over 300 mile range, and then absolutely. Let me know in the comment section if these if these specs really hold up. Would you be interested in getting this car over getting the Model 3 regardless? Uh, well, if the price is the same. Curious to know. Uh, put it in the comment section. I'm looking forward to that. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.